Hello everyone, my name is Hannah Kerner and I'm an assistant research professor at the University of Maryland. And today I'll be presenting our paper titled Resilient In-Season Crop Type Classification in Multispectral Satellite Observations Using Growth Stage Normalization. Crop type maps give spatial information about where specific crop types are planted, such as the cropland data layer, which is produced by the USDA each year. These crop type maps are important inputs for agricultural decision making. They're used for estimating crop yields, crop production, and conditions. They're used for assessing food security and making policies, and can inform agricultural commodities market activities as well. One challenge for producing crop type maps is that for many applications, it's important to have them during the growing season. And many maps, such as the CDL, are produced after the season is over. Another challenge is that most models do not generalize well to future season, seasons that are not captured in the training data, especially when there are anomalies like planting delays. Instead, most operational approaches rely on collecting new ground data every season for training, which can be expensive and is not always feasible, such as when travel is, rest is restricted during COVID-19. One scenario that emphasized both of these challenges was the 2019 growing season in the US Midwest, where record flooding caused planting delays of one to two months and resulted in high market uncertainty about crop conditions. In our study, we focused initially on an area of Northern Illinois spanning about 12,000 square kilometers, since Illinois is the second largest producer of corn and soybeans in the United States, and it was hit particularly hard by flooding in 2019. The challenge for machine learning models is that seasons will vary from year to year, and these variations are only going to increase with climate change. So our classifiers need to be able to account for the domain shift that can occur in future seasons. These three images show the same location in Illinois on June 3rd, taken in 2017, 2018, and 2019. You can clearly see that the fields in this area are in different growth stages in each image, since crops were planted later in both 2017 and 2019 compared to 2018. So on June 3rd and 2018, we see lots of vegetation or green up, but most fields are still bare at the same time in 2019. If we plot the distribution of NDVI, which is an indicator that is essentially a measure of vegetation, in each of the pixels in 2017, shown in purple, 2018, shown in red, and 2017, shown in blue, we can see that in pixels where corn and soybeans were planted, the 2019 distribution is shifted much lower compared to prior years. However, these observation or these distributions are very similar in other pixels or non-corn and soybean pixels, which capture land cover like buildings, roads, and forests, which are not influenced by seasonal variations. To account for this domain shift, we propose the idea of growth stage normalization in which we use satellite observation inputs from the same growth stage rather than the same day as it's traditionally done. The first step in growth stage normalization is to detect these growth stages in the NDVI time series. So based on the slope of the NDVI time series curve or the rate that the NDVI is changing, we detect the day of the year when green up, peak growth and senescence are likely taking place. So this gives us three dates for every pixel, shown here as the day of the year. Next, we select the satellite observations that were acquired on those dates in each pixel. So the value in each pixel in these images is from the satellite observations corresponding to the detected growth stage day. And then from those satellite observations, we extract the spectral, spectral and spatial examples that will be used as the inputs to our model. In both types of input, we use the optical bands from the Harmonized Landsat and Sentinel-2 or HLS dataset, as well as two spectral indices, NDWI and LSWI that we compute from those bands. 
And we also use three synthetic aperture radar or SAR inputs from the Sentinel-1 satellites. And all of these observations have 30 meters per pixel spatial resolution. The model we propose to use for classification is a neural network with an LSTM branch, which looks at the spatio-temporal information in the predicted pixel, and a CNN branch, or convolutional neural network branch, which considers the spatial information around the predicted pixel. We also include a third input, which is the difference between the senescence and green updates in each pixel in order to capture the duration of crop growth. Since we don't have ground truth data to use for training the model, we use the cropland data layer from the USDA as labels for our three output classes, which are corn, soybean, and other. This approach enables classifications at three times during the growing season. For the early season prediction, we use only the observations from the green up stage. For the mid-season prediction, we use the observations from the green up and the peak growth stages. And for the late season prediction, we use observations from all three stages. To evaluate the temporal generalization of this approach, we train the model using data from 2017 and 2018, and we tested that model using data from 2019, which again was an anomalous year due to the late planting and extreme weather. We tested our method, which we call CNN-LSTM Delta, as well as the CNN-LSTM without the Delta input and the CNN and LSTM branches independently, as well as a random forest. And we compared these methods with growth stage normalization to how they would perform without growth, st growth stage normalization or using the same dates for all inputs. What we found was that growth stage normalization improved the performance for all methods. And that our method had the best overall accuracy of 85.4% for the late season classification. For the mid season classification, the CNN branch had the best overall accuracy of 82.8%. And for the early season classification, we found that the random forest with growth stage normalization had the best accuracy of 69%. When we look at these predictions spatially, we can see qualitatively how the classification accuracy improves as the season progresses, and we have more information about the growth stages. Since the CDL is not actually ground truth data, but it is itself a classification based on high quality ground truth data, there are some errors in the CDL that can introduce errors into our model training, as well as cause underestimation of predicted accuracy in some places where our model may have made a correct prediction, but there was an incorrect prediction in the CDL. In conclusion, we presented a method for in-season crop type classification that addresses domain shift by normalizing inputs by their growth stage. We evaluated this method for predicting crop types in 2019, which saw a major domain shift due to flooding, using training data from 2017 and 2018. We found that this growth stage normalization improved performance for all the models we tested, and that the best performance of 84.5% was achieved using our LSTM CNN Delta method in the late season, around September to November during harvesting. In future work, we are working on scaling our model to produce crop type maps for all US Corn Belt states during the current ongoing 2020 growing season. And we are also working on evaluating using higher resolution spatial patches, such as the three meter Planet Labs data uh, for the CNN branch of the model. And additionally, we're testing segmentation methods such as UNET to see if these provide improved classification performance.